Returning now to one of our top stories, the historic meeting between the leaders of North and South Korea. Bill Powell joins us from Washington. He's a journalist based in the United States who's been following this story. Bill, great to have you with us. What will each side be hoping to get out of these talks? What's in it for Kim and what's in it for Moon? Um, well, I think for um, Moon Jae-in, it's a, um, uh, a chance to um, follow in the footsteps of, of one of the, uh, the leaders of his, of his uh, left-leaning political party in, in South Korea, the late Kim Dae-jung, um, and try to solidify uh, inter-Korean um, relations. It has been a rare event when uh, the presidents of, of South and and the, and the uh, supreme leader of North Korea uh, have met. Um, this now is obviously an especially propitious moment to do so because of the, the even more historic uh, forthcoming meeting between President Donald Trump and uh, Kim Jong-un. Um, I think both sides will, I think there are some specific things that both sides would like to negotiate. The North would like to um, once again reopen um, some economic uh, channels with the South, possibly including the, the Kaesong Industrial Plant, which was an a, um, industrial complex just across the DMZ in the North, um, which housed manufacturing facilities for um, many uh, small and medium-sized South Korean companies. Um, I think they would like to re-engage uh, with increased tourism from the South um, and, and, and then put the overall um, South Korean and North Korean relationship on a path toward normalization in the context of the, the Trump-Kim Jong-un meeting, which could, which could really help move that ball forward um, uh, if that meeting, in fact, comes off in, in late May or, or early June, as I expect it will. Do you think that, the, that South Korea will address uh, the issues that the U.S. has in this meeting, and, and again, in, hope, in the hopes of paving the way for the, the framework around these talks? I think actually, the, the, from the U.S. standpoint, the, the, the most dangerous or perilous um, obstacle when it comes to, to relations with the North has already ostensibly been cleared, which is that when, when, sec when now Secretary of State Pompeo visited uh, Pyongyang and met with Kim Jong-un, um, he got reassurances that um, the North, as a precondition to talks about denuclearization, the North will not insist upon um, an eventual complete withdrawal of U.S. troops in South Korea. That was an upfront concession, which, if it's stuck to, um, it does amount to a, a significant change in what has been past North Korean policy. So I think from the, when, when Pompeo came back with that agreement, there was a huge sigh of relief in, in, in the Pentagon um, and the White House. Um, so I think now, um, I mean, clearly, uh, the 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 South Korean President Moon Jae-in was not in a position to negotiate on what U.S. troop levels um, might or might not be. I think his inclination um, uh, would be for an eventual drawdown if, if conditions warrant that. Um, but given that Kim Jong-un has apparently taken that issue off the table, I think it gives Moon, Moon Jae-in and Kim Jong-un a chance to deal with inter-Korean issues um, pretty freely, without a lot of concern from from Washington as to what those what those details might be in terms of in terms of agreements. Bill, just quickly before we go, you know, it seems like things evolved pretty quickly from the North, you know, months months ago, saying that it was capable of hitting the United States with a missile. To now, they're saying they're going to halt their nuclear weapons program. What could possibly go wrong here in this talks? What are the dangers? Is there a possibility North Korea could scrap this entirely and go back? I mean, that's certainly probably a, a risk and a concern. I think the risk in, is in the aftermath of the, let's assume for discussion's sake that, that the Trump-Kim meeting does come off. 
uh, in a month or so. If the president decides that he doesn't get whatever it is he's coming for, um, and, and by the way, I think that's not yet hashed out on the Washington side as to what, what, what they think they can get, what they hope to get, um, short of an outright um, declaration of denuclearization, um, which is you know, the, the, the publicly stated goal. If the U.S. falls short of that and Trump walks away dissatisfied, then I think it puts back on the table the possibility of, of a military strike. Mm -hmm. I think that's the greatest risk here. The greatest risk is they have this historic, um, just completely surreal summit meeting between mm -hmm. President Trump and Kim Jong-un. And if President Trump and the U.S. side decides, uh, you know what, we're getting played here, um, this isn't going to work, what do they come back to Washington and then do? That, I think, is the most, is the most parlous, parlous aspect of this. Bill Powell in Washington, thanks for being with us.